Hi, I'm Dwight Gow and you're watching Newcastle Fan TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Newcastle Fans TV. So we're going to be talking, well analysing the two goals which were conceded on Sunday today and um, hopefully you've been enjoying the content all week, you know the, the big build up to all the preview on Spurs, you know, um, worked quite hard last week to bring our, our own content. Now, a little bit of piece of news, you know, um, We've joined Ball Street, um, so some of you might not, uh, some of some of you might know, some of you might not know. But you know, we're trying to move away from using other people's content now and using our own because we're now really focused and pushing on a lot of things on the channel. And you know, personally, I've got to thank Will and Alicia for all their hard work this week, and also to Sharky and Hundred Percent NUFC who's uh, come on the channel as well. So uh, your feedback you suggested, look, uh, you sh I think you should stop using other people's content, and we will we will be coming out of there very 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 quickly and we haven't been using their content um, we've used a couple of clips uh, this week but it hasn't been many so hopefully you've been enjoying the, the stuff that we've been putting out and we're going to be focusing on obviously Huddersfield uh, in the next well coming in the next year or two you know uh, even this week I've been really busy I've appeared on like Copper 90 um, Ball Street I've mentioned even uh, popped on BT Sport have a look at this I think this season without European football Leicester are in with a good chance of pushing for a top six place Kalechi Iheanacho is a fantastic signing and I'm really optimistic about him and Jamie Vardy linking up together this season I think that speed of transition and hitting people on the counter attack using Lukaku in the channels is one reason Manchester United fans have to be optimistic going into this season we've now got a hungry side a young side that can really do things Come on, Stoke. We're optimistic because we've got Rafa Benitez with him in charge. Expect a few shock results this year. All right, loads coming in as well on social media. Um, hashtag PL tonight to get involved. And Chris carries on that last comment there. Optimistic because of Rafa, pessimistic because of Ashley. Whatever he does, Mike Ashley can't win, can he? Um, so pretty cool. You know, the channel's going places, which is nice because it's nice to see our hard work, you know, uh, well, rewarded, so to speak. Right, anyways, enough of that. Let's talk about uh, the game. Um, we know that Shelby effectively possibly cost us a point. Uh, some people are going to say, well, he's an idiot and all that. When we've talked about it, and we've seen it on fan cams, that you know, people aren't great. But I want to talk about the two goals which were conceded because a lot of people think that Javier Manquillo had a good game. Now, going forward, he was a little bit of a threat. Now, it does feel like that I'm picking on him. I don't want this to come across, but I'm just pointing out the two goals. We're going to have a still clip, so we're going to point on the screen now for you. So, as you say, when Ericsson goes across, you can see Ali start to make his run. Now, Mankio is late to see it. It's not Lascelles' fault. It's clearly Mankio who's tracking Ali. Mankio then stops running, and then Ali gets on the end of it. And there, Spurs go and score. So that, for me, is a Mankio error. Let me know what you think and the thoughts on there below. The second goal, let's get it back up again. So you can see Richie pointing to Mankio. Look, watch Davis, watch him. He's, he's going to make a move, okay? As the player starts to move on, when Davis strikes the ball further on, again, it's Mankio who loses his man and Davis scores. However, I do think probably Rob Elliott should do, do a lot better, you know? Just want to touch upon... So let me know. I think for me personally, that's Javier Manquillo. He needs to work on his defensive game. So it was a similar kind of goal which mine scored their second goal in the pre-season friendly, which Manquillo is marking. So we've already picked up a problem there and he needs to get that addressed because that cost, well, it did a cost with two goals. Was it his fault alone? No, you could have said to collect it, but he should be marking for me. Um, positives to come out of the game. Let's talk about positives because we've all been on a down now. We've all been frustrated. Isaac Hayden, for me in the first half, was outstanding. Yes, outstanding. He was up against uh, some quality opposition like the likes of Deli Ali and, uh, you know, Ericsson. And I thought he'd done absolutely fantastic, you know. We're wondering how will he get on the Premier League. And judging by that first half, he was absolutely outstanding. Yes, Chris Natsu is going to get all applauded and write this up. But Isaac Hayden come up against his own there. He was brilliant first half. Chris Natsu, man of the match without a shadow of a doubt, wasn't he? I mean, I haven't really talked about the game as such because I've been getting a lot of people's opinions. But, you know, Atsu was absolutely fantastic. Newcastle clearly were trying to get the ball long, get it to Atsu. And, you know, young walkers, as Spurs fans, he played well. Cause, but I have to disagree. I thought Atsu was skinning him left, right and centre. Yes, his final third wasn't great, but Atsu was, without a shadow of a doubt, our, our threat. Um, you know, the frustrating side of things is Newcastle with 11 men, Spurs, I don't feel, would have scored. The Spurs will look bang average. Yes, they look pretty on the ball and they were dominating the possession, but that was it until Shelby was sent off. It was practically nil-nil written all over at Newcastle were sitting seven or eight men behind the ball. 
disappointed in Matt Ritchie. I thought he, he was a passenger along with Shelby. I know Shelby got sent off and stupid. We know all about that. But those two in particular were quite disappointed. We heavily relied on Chris Inatsu trying to get w- w- us something out of that goal. And, you know, we desperately need a striker in before Huddersfield. Now, when there is talk that Hostler was on Tyneside, having his medical, the media are talking about that. Is he the answer? I think it'll be third choice. I don't want to be sound too negative. That's for that's for a debate for you guys in your comments down there below. So we'll come off that. And you like I said earlier on the video, hopefully you, you like the content that we're doing. Um, we're going to be starting building up to Huddersfield, get more years on. Uh, that's what I want to fans channel, get you lot involved as well. Uh, we expect Newcastle to have a lot more possession against Huddersfield. You would think that. So Newcastle, maybe it's a slight tweak of the tactic with Shelby coming out. Did Mikel Moreno come in? You know, that's questions for on further on in the week. I'm more optimistic about that because we're not we're not going to be playing we're not going to be playing Spurs every week, like the Man United, Liverpool, and so on. We'll be playing teams, your Palaces, your Stokes, your Watfords. Those are the games that we need to be picking up points. And uh, have a look on Snapchat. We'd also be doing a Snapchat takeover. That that's the next video which is going to be coming out. And of course, if you want more further news, have a look at with Facebook. The admins there show loads and loads of news. Head over to Newcastle Fans TV and head over to a Twitter as well. I update that and a couple of others as well and Instagram as well. So thank you very much for watching Newcastle Fans TV. Let us know what you think about the results, uh, about the errors, and can we move forward with Huddersfield as well? Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye bye.